Science and Medical Director General of Dubai Health Authority, Dr. Layla Marzoghi, Acting Director of Health Regulation Department, <coughs> CEOs and Medical Directors of our private sectors and all our respected <coughs> attendees. First of all, DHA would like to welcome you all in our today's opening meeting with His Excellency Direct General, Director General. Now I would like to invite His Excellency Engineer Isa Maidur, Director General of Dubai Health Authority, to give his speech. Thank you very much giving us a valuable part of your time. I'm sure everybody is busy, but I think uh, I would not call it a meeting, it's a gathering uh, more, more in, in, as, as uh, we lived together and we are in this sector and we have to deal with each other. So if we don't know each other, it's really a problem. So we promise you at least twice a year we should meet informally just to get to know each other. So in case any issues arises, we know with whom to communicate. Uh, the sector is very important to Dubai and to the UAE and to the region. Uh, we believe in the, our partnership together uh, and luckily Dubai has developed that and uh, we have 10% governmental but 90% private. So you guys very important to Dubai society and delivering a very important service which is the health uh, care. Uh, as Sheikh Mohammed said, there is no limit to excellence. Uh, always we have to uh, look where are the opportunities to improve and to, to develop uh, the services and that for sure by talking to each other and having this uh, dialogue with in the back of our mind that our intention is to improve and to develop and rather than one hospital, we hope you guys make more than one. And you know, in uh, all fields of the health services which is required to the society. Uh, we are doing our best, my team, Dr. Leila and all others, doing their best uh, you know, to facilitate doing this business. For sure there is legislations, rules, regulations. Uh, Sometimes we are you know, uh, providing the service as a hospital, sometimes we are customers. As I've seen some of the, <laughs> David was a customer yesterday <laughs> with operation in his knee. So it's, uh, we could, it could be us, it could be our families. So as we organize this uh, sector and as we make it, you know, in the best level, it will, it's going to, for sure, uh, the benefit will be to the investor, to the customers, to the staff, to everybody. Uh, and we believe that we cannot do it alone. We don't want it to be just one way uh, dialogue. It has to be uh, two ways. So we are always here. Uh, as I said, this is gathering going to happen, I hope, uh, at least twice a year to, he to at least just to, even if we don't have a subject. So uh, we appreciate your visit, uh, your uh, presence and your participation. Uh, any challenges is, is opportunity. So we hope to hear from you either today or any time, uh, you know, we could have the, anything can be emailed to us or uh, by phone or any, any sort of means. But in the meantime, we hope to have uh, a fruitful discussion which result in improving the, the, the sector. Uh, we thank you very much and there is no, you know, any limitation. You can talk about any, any issue you guys would like to uh, address today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency, for your valuable words. Ladies and gentlemen, discussion, discu discussion starts. Um, uh, Ivalu, um, uh, form which has an email and it has a, um, and a phone number on it. And at the second page, uh, it has a page with you where you can write your comments and suggestions. If you'd like uh, to uh, write them and then pass it on to us, or if you want to discuss it in front of everybody, you're welcome to do that. So, Anybody would like to raise any issue, please? Uh, uh, only my points here, especially in healthcare services. In healthcare services, you have 24 seven, should be your medical team ready. So it's always that uh, you cannot prevent staff from leaving, but a replacement should be available now, in, in, in an easy way. In points which is especially a little bit we are suffering about subspecialty. Subspecialty is a little bit uh, complicated. That they ask for subspecialty, they need 
certificate from the university. For me, I am ophthalmologist. Uh, to give you an example, engineer Isa. Uh, I graduated in uh, 2001. There was still no laser. It was still laser. It was not yet announced, uh, started, machine, or people not yet practicing laser. But maybe when I was practicing, I did many certificates and experience. I, I went to many conferences. I did many cases. Which you will see many of the doctors, okay, like in, uh, in um, interventional cardiology, like that. Here it's some specialty because not all the, uh, medicine is uh, developing day by day. So many new techniques, many new machines is coming. So you cannot force the doctor that you should have certificate from the university. And now I cannot go back to university and get certificate. But of course, I give you experience. I give you logbook, I give you certificate that I'm practicing, doing cases on 1,000 patients in, 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 uh, in, uh, in uh, respected universities and respected hospitals in my home country or otherwise. So this subject, because... So, let, you, you, you are saying you shouldn't ask for the certificate? Yeah, because not everyone, I mean, as I said, medicine is uh, developing always. And you see new sub-speciality yeah. and supra speciality difference between the medicine is developing and should go with the development or originally as an engineer I should have an engineering certificate. Yeah, of course this one should have yeah. a, a doctor mm. certificate. American physicians or a physician from America, they have all the boards for the subspecialties. So there is a board for internal, internal medicine, board in general cardiology and a board in interventional cardiology. To recruit an interventional cardiologist, we look for people with, who are boarded in interventional cardiology. If I recruit an interventional cardiologist from Germany, for example, yeah. uh, in Germany there is no, no, certificates, no certificates for interventional cardiology, similar maybe in France or in UK. So it um, depends on where the physician is come. For example, in European countries, most of the European countries, it is a training program. Yes. But at the end of the program, they don't get a certificate of internal interventional cardiology. Yes. I think they here where the problems. Yes. Uh, also, also the issue, I think the American physicians are paying the price for a very well organized system in the States. Uh, this brings us to another subject, which is recertification. For any American boarded physician, they have to renew their board by recertification, by sitting an exam, and that usually happens once every yes. 10 years in the States. Uh, this system is not followed in Europe. So in Germany, if you are licensed, you are licensed for life. There is no recertification. Re in UK, they just started, the GMC started the revalidation program last year. So this is so which happening. one you prefer? Are you well, definitely we go by the American system. Not we, but the American mean, system as, as because as this is a very well-developed system. There are boards, there are certification, and there is a recertification. So what, what do you think if a guy <coughs> came from Germany? Yeah. This is a very valid point, and we know that the market is in need of interventional cardiologists. And a lot of um, application has come and request has come to us regarding this issue. I reassure you, we will work on this issue and the policy will be out soon. And it's not necessary for them to have only the American board. And we are aware that the certificate, the only few countries, like uh, Dr. Raoult mentioned, many, uh, give you a certificate in that subspeciality, which is the intervention cardiology. And the policy will come out in shall for All the other subspecialty, because this one will make Dubai really rich in this. Thank you.